There are few comedies in Hollywood history that seem to have retained the impact both culturally and viscerally like the 1959 film Some Like It Hot. Billy Wilder had long since proven his mettle as a screenwriter and director by the time of its release thanks to Double Indemnity, The Lost Weekend, Ace in the Hole, The Seven Year Itch, Sunset Boulevard and more. But the film's defiance of convention, made without the notoriously restrictive motion picture production code seal of approval, made it a delightfully naughty escapade for audiences that had only grown in stature over the years and even became a trailblazer, if not necessarily a nuanced one, for exploring taboo subjects like homosexuality on screen. After witnessing a mafia murder, slick saxophone player Joe, played by Tony Curtis, and his long-suffering buddy Jerry, played by Jack Lemmon, improvise a quick plan to escape from Chicago with their lives. Disguising themselves as women, they join an all-female jazz band and hop a train bound for sunny Florida. While Joe pretends to be a millionaire to win the band's sexy singer Sugar, played by Marilyn Monroe, Jerry finds himself pursued by a real millionaire played by Joe E. Brown as things heat up and the mobsters begin to close in. When Wilder originally conceived the idea with co-screenwriter I.A.L. Diamond, he originally hoped to cast Frank Sinatra as Jerry, the role that went to Jack Lemmon, and Mitzi Gaynor as Sugar, eventually played by Marilyn Monroe. Sinatra apparently lost out on the role after missing a lunch date with Wilder. El Capone was also an inspiration and obvious point of reference for the character of Spats Columbo, the gangster on Joe and Jerry's heels. Capone gunned down rival gang members in the 1929 St. Valentine's Day Massacre, an incident that is strikingly similar to the events in the film. Many scenes were shot at the Hotel Del Coronado in Coronado, California, which appeared as the Seminole Ritz Hotel in Miami in the film, as it fit into the era of the 1920s and was near Hollywood. Some Like It Hot showcased the talents of Marilyn Monroe, Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon, while also highlighting the hotel's assets, a spectacular sun-drenched silhouette of Victorian architecture, the perfect backdrop for the film's 1929 setting. Jack Lemmon wrote that the first sneak preview had a bad reaction with many audience walkouts, many studio personnel and agents offered advice to Billy Wilder on what scenes to reshoot, add and cut. Lemon asked Wilder what he was going to do. Wilder responded, why nothing? This is a very funny movie and I believe in it just as it is. Maybe this is the wrong neighborhood in which to have shown it. At any rate, I don't panic over one preview. It's a hell of a movie. Wilder held the next preview in the Westwood section of Los Angeles and the audience stood up and cheered. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. Stories of the difficulty that cast and crew had with Marilyn Monroe during the making of this film have grown to almost mythical proportions. According to Curtis, Munro was routinely two to three hours late to the set and occasionally refused to leave her dressing room. Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon, who had to kick off their shoes and soak their painful feet the second Billy Wilder said cut, were usually forced to stand around in painful high heels for long periods while Marilyn Monroe flubbed her lines. There were many problems with Marilyn Monroe who lacked concentration and suffered from an addiction to pills. She was constantly late to set and could not memorize many of her lines, averaging 35 to 40 takes for a single line, according to Tony Curtis. The line, It's Me Sugar, took 47 takes to get correct because Munro kept getting the word order wrong, saying either Sugar It's Me or It's Sugar Me. Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon made bets during the filming on how many takes she would need to get it right. Three days were scheduled for shooting the scene with Shell Jr. and Sugar at the beach as Munro had many complicated lines, but the scene was finished in only 20 minutes. 
Munro's acting coach, Paula Strasberg, and Munro's husband, playwright Arthur Miller, both tried to influence the production, which Wilder and other crew members found annoying. Billy Wilder spoke in 1959 about making another film with Munro. He said, I have discussed this with my doctor and my psychiatrist, and they tell me I'm too old and too rich to go through this again. But Wilder also admitted, my Aunt Minnie would always be punctual and never hold up production, but who would pay to see my Aunt Minnie? He also stated that Munro played her part wonderfully. Marilyn Munro also wanted the movie to be shot in colour. Her contract stipulated that all her films were to be in colour, but Billy Wilder convinced her to let it be shot in black and white when costume tests revealed that the makeup that Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon wore gave their faces a green tinge. In order to get comfortable in their costumes, Curtis and Lemon walked around Goldwyn Studios dressed up as women to see how long it would take for them to get noticed. A scene on the train where the duo applies makeup echoes an experience where they used a public mirror and none of the surrounding women complained, convincing them that they could fool or even just pass for women. Curtis and Lemon hired a male cabaret dancer named Barbette to teach them how to walk in heels. But after a week, Lemon declined his help after realizing that he wanted to look like a man trying to walk like a woman rather than simply walking like a woman. Curtis proposed that he talk like Cary Grant when playing the millionaire role and Wilder agreed. The results are self-evident in the film. When Cary Grant saw the film and Curtis's impression, he joked, I don't talk like that. Despite his best efforts, Curtis was unable to maintain the falsetto needed to play Josephine for an extended period of time. As a result, Wilder ended up combining some elements of Curtis's performance with dubbing by actor Paul Fries to give it the consistency that the film needed. Tony Curtis had been spotted by Billy Wilder while he was making the film Houdini in 1953 and he thought Curtis would be perfect for the role of Joe. I was sure Tony was right for it, explained Wilder, because he was quite handsome and when he tells Marilyn that he is one of the Shell Oil family, she has to be able to believe it. Jerry Lewis and Danny Kaye were also considered for the role of Jerry. Though finally, Wilder saw Jack Lemmon in the comedy Operation Madball and selected him for the part. Wilder and Lemmon would go on to make numerous films together, including The Apartment and several films which also included Walter Matthau. With regards to sound design, there is a strong musical element in the film, with the soundtrack created by Adolf Deutsch. It has an authentic 1920s jazz feel, using sharp, brassy strings to create tension in certain moments, for example, whenever Spats' as gangsters appear. Some Like It Hot opened to critical and commercial success and is considered to be one of the greatest films of all time. The film received six Academy Award nominations, including Best Actor, Best Director and Best Adapted Screenplay, winning for Best Costume Design. The production of Some Like It Hot began on June the 1st in 1958, which was also Marilyn Monroe's 32nd birthday. Production on the film ended on November the 5th, 1958, two months over schedule and over half a million dollars over budget. Florida, which is depicted in the film, was a popular winter vacation spot for snowbound folks in the era this film was set, and train travel was the mode of transportation to get there. The advent of popular air travel was still some years away, as were exotic holiday destinations like Hawaii. Both Wilder and Diamond were very precise writers, but when it came to Some Like It Hot's punchline, they were absolutely indecisive. They got as far as Lemon ripping off his wig and saying he can't marry Osgood Fielding III because I'm a man. What comes next? Diamond suggested nobody's perfect and Wilder said to keep it in so they could send the script to the mimeographer. We thought about it all week. Neither of us could come up with anything better. So we shot that line still not entirely satisfied. Viewers, however, felt entirely differently. The audience just exploded, Wilder said. That line got us one of the biggest laughs I've ever heard in the theatre. But we just hadn't trusted it when we wrote it. 
We just didn't see it. Nobody's perfect. The line had come too easily, just popped out. Comedy is such a subjective genre, though it's impossible to say that something is the best, best to who, and based on what definition of comedy. But that didn't stop the American Film Institute from ranking the top 100 American movie comedies topped by Some Like It Hot. You'll get no argument from most people, but Wilder was a bit circumspect at the honour. I'm happy for it, but it's not true, he said. It's not the best because there is no best. It's one of the best. It's a good picture and I'm proud of it. I'm happy people still like it so much. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite scene and some like it hot that you like the most or a moment that makes you laugh out loud? Let us know in the comments below and if you haven't done so already, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.